winter because for me 10 degrees celsius is straight into winter i don't know what that is in fahrenheit that's just crazy it's 31 degrees celsius today and i mean it's already late it's five o'clock so 31 degrees celsius I, that's something like a gazillion in fahrenheit i don't know what that is but it's lovely in <laughs> south africa as always i have no idea what that is <laughs> it's it's a temperature to be determined later it's like 95 yeah. or 90 odd ish it's warm. Well, it's warmed up here too. I mean, it was, I think on over the weekend, it was going out walking the dog. It was almost 80 degrees Fahrenheit. So um, yeah, it was, it was enough that uh, no, it was no longer needed a sweater or jacket. It was just a t-shirt, um, which by the way, and Sean's not here for me to, we, we had, we just surpassed SharePoint's 20th birthday a few days ago. And uh, so this is the first opportunity that I have to wear my, classic this is the old ba insight uh t-shirt you can see it there nice. yeah. oh yeah so. remember it fondly yes so anything else exciting going on anything that we should be uh made aware of well it was also yesterday was microsoft's birthday we're the same age i'm actually a little bit older than microsoft six weeks older that's nothing for me um it also took me pretty much about 45 years to get my stuff together i must admit and I, I figured out that both of us, me and Microsoft both, um, we, we did crazy things in our 42nd years, which is, uh, of course, the magical year. I got my first tattoo and Microsoft got Microsoft Teams. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. I saw that tweet. So, <laughs> so happy birthday, Microsoft. <laughs> Very cool. Well, let's uh, with Mike usually covers the message center updates. And I know that over the last couple of weeks, we took a pause last week uh this is episode 54. Uh, we took a pause last week because we had the mvp summit um lots lots came out uh during during the, mm -hmm. the the sessions last week the difficult thing is always like uh and, and one of the benefits of of reading through the message center is trying to remember what's been discussed what can i talk about what's actually public that's out there so i'll again you know hashtag no leaks be very careful with what we talk about and share here. Uh, I'm going to try to be careful. I cannot confirm or deny anything that is being said or referred to. Um, I may or may not even be here right now. It all depends. Oh, wait. On so I should share the disclaimer. So I'll uh, disclaimer on screen now in the live feed. Um, no animals, children, or mimes were harmed during this broadcast. The views and opinions dis expressed in this live stream are provided as is by the participants who are experts on some, but not all Microsoft technologies. <laughs> so just like so you bring that out, we're experts <laughs> <I know. laughs> on those things. But let's, uh, there are a couple things which I wanted to highlight. I mean, there's a lot that's happening in the message center. One thing that I didn't put within this, uh, oh, there's Sean. And Sean, any day, uh, there he is. Yeah, hey, you. Sean. And yeah, everyone, yeah, yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. mentioned Sean was probably going to be here. Sean, a consultant with Bitstream Foundry in Cincinnati, Ohio, and yet another Office Apps and Services MVP, although it's a dime a dozen here in uh, the, the the broadcast. So, yeah. We're like but, rabbits. We are. <laughs> well, I was just about to get in underway with the Message Center updates. Uh, one thing I was going to say is that if you've not been in, for those that are admins into the Message Center, uh, in a while, and there's been an upgrade. There's more that's actually coming. The, we've actually talked about in the past, and I remember the last MVP summit in person. So was that 2019, uh, where we oh, were in go. Redmond? Yeah, uh, when we were together. And one of the piece of feedback that I that I provided in one of the sessions uh, to that team was, you know, what I'd love to know is like it's great to get these message center updates, all the changes that are happening globally the tenants i don't care unless it's happening to my tenant can you tell me on just my tenant 
So there are some really cool features that are, it's getting so much better with the tags and filters and what you're able to do with, with columns to look through just the, the, uh, you know, the, the flood of updates that are coming through. I'm only going to highlight four here in the last two weeks. There's probably, I don't know, 50 line items that we've not talked about. Um, just a lot of stuff going in there. So if you're an admin, spend some time in the Matches Center. But the things that I want to just very quickly go through. So number one, uh, Outlook on the web has that new calendar board view. We've been seeing some snapshots of the board view and what that looks like for a while. So here's the update. It says this coming calendar board release will bring a new view to the calendar and Outlook on the web. In addition to the current views, users will soon be able to select a board view, which will provide an expanded view where they can manage workloads like calendar, tasks, goals, flagged emails, and files. And so the targeted release, it's going to begin rolling out this mid-month, mid-April, and complete by late May. Uh, and then for standard release, it'll be again in late May and and it, it end by the end of June. So this is again, I, so I've my primary consumption of Outlook is now through Outlook on the web. Because of all these new features, I'm trying to force myself to use the web-based versions of the various tools to take advantage of the features. Like all the new, the PowerPoint Live stuff is awesome. And so I'm, I'm exploring more of those capabilities, but I've been looking forward to this and have that kind of open whiteboard, you know, snap lists of different things that you'll be able to do that we've, again, been seeing pictures of this for about a year or more. And so it's great to see this stuff actually rolled out. I'm glad it's not with the pictures of the UFO sightings. That stuff is At real. At least that fun. reality, you know, we've been seeing it, pictures it, of it. It's more it real is than our the UFO reality, sightings. Sean. It's real. It's real. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, the second one, Teams, join a meeting with a digital meeting ID. Another just feature that's been out there in the wild and other platforms, be able to send, just simplify the invite process uh, that you can have a recurring meeting, have that digital meeting ID. So this release of Microsoft Teams meeting ID will be rolling out to Microsoft Teams desktop, mobile, and web. I'll provide an additional way for users to join a Microsoft Teams meeting by entering a digital ID. So those attractive URLs that Microsoft is so fond of that are like two pages long, but instead you can have one place to go to, enter in that ID, and that is going to start rolling out in early May and complete by the end of May. So that's a great feature. Um, the other one I'll kind of toggle the, the, the order here is an updated uh, uh, update, um, introducing a registration page for Microsoft Teams meetings. Another thing that like getting more of the webinar type capability. So Microsoft Teams meeting organizers will soon be able to able to create a custom registration page for any meeting, although the feature is designed for webinars. The feature is available for meeting organizers using Teams desktop applications and Teams on the web. And so it's starting to roll out in early April. Uh, it, so it's been delayed. I think that's the update. It was it was supposed to start rolling out in March and there was a delay, but it should be completed by early May. Uh, so that's exciting to be able to do that so that we can uh, really start using Teams uh, for external webinar type capability. There's more features that are coming and we're all excited about that. I, I've long said that I, I'm I'm still a paid Zoom user for webinars and for other meeting recordings just because of some of the, the missing features in Teams. So I'm looking forward to displace that. And the last one I wanted to share was the quick create, easy to create Power BI reports from lists. And so, uh, you all know that I, I'm, I've been a fan of and been promoting the list capability. Uh, it, so the update is we're excited to announce the arrival of a new guided authoring experiences in lists that will make it easy to quickly create BI reports to Power BI or in Power BI using your list schema and data. Uh, so the targeted release is rolling out early May and uh, and standard release uh, also late May to early June. So they're pushing that out pretty quickly. So this is just more of that democratization of the BI capabilities, being able to go build things within lists and then distribute that and do more with it through Power BI is pretty cool. Any other highlights, any other announcements anybody wants to mention? Anything that 
stood out from announcements over the last couple of weeks? Hmm. No. My head's okay. been in the sand. Oh, is that what happened last week, Sean? Or the, or two weeks ago? You know, every now and then we've got this little thing called work. And yeah, I'm, it happens. I, I've heard that. Yeah. Well, very cool. Well, let's uh, well, let's go ahead and jump into the questions. I know we have uh, quite a few out there. Um, and if anybody that's watching the live stream, so we are simulcasting on uh, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and it should be running on LinkedIn, although it's uh, the API has had some failures over the last couple of attempts. Uh, but yeah, via the restream. MySpace one. The MySpace yeah, one. Yeah, but uh, and we're still well, like always. Feed. If you missed any of the past, this is episode 54. You can find them out on YouTube, on the Collab Talk page. You can find all of our past recordings, and as well as out on Buckley Planet on my blog. And I do go through and I create a list of every question that we attempt to answer. Again, <laughs> for those that need it, our disclaimer again on screen here. Pressure are... <laughs> off, thank goodness. <laughs> That's right. I just, like, I just need to display the, the uh, disclaimer more. So something just happened. We got the disclaimer back. That's awesome. <laughs> Although something is happening with, uh, hopefully it's on screen. It's not showing. What has occurred, Christian? Lead us to safety, please. Uh, it's not showing highlighted um, to see if it's still streaming. No, it says it's interrupted. What happened? Stream interrupted. So while you sort that out, I'm going to grab coffee, but I'm listening. Yeah. I'm listening. Yeah, no worries. Yeah, the yellow box disappeared and we paused on the live stream. I'm not sure what's we it froze in the disclaimer. You know, all this time I didn't know that, that Tracy was a huge racer. Look at that chair. Check out that seat. <laughs> oh, yeah. She needs a five point harness in, in that thing. <laughs> Yeah, I don't understand the rage with gaming chairs right now, but to each his own or her own. Find one that's comfortable. Where would you like to sit for 24 hours without moving? Uh, well, what? That's a good question. What is happening? Let me check with Restream. Cats and dogs living together, mass hysteria. Yeah, for whatever reason, we are not streaming, and it's everything says it's working. Hmm. And still, I mean, we're still recording. Still going through OBS. Yeah, hmm. it's. Uh, I'm going to end stream and restart on the stream. We're still recording on here, though. So so we'll keep up the entertaining banter. <laughs> Hal, don't talk so much. Sorry about that. <laughs> oh, oh, I had some problems point. this morning. I had uh, the internet drop out on me a little while ago. The chair is fake, by the way. I'm sitting on a cheap plastic chair. I built it into my fake background. I'm joking, but it would be a cool idea. <laughs> <laughs> a little late in the day for coffee, isn't it, Tracy? I can. I, the last thing I do before I go to bed is drink coffee. My. Um, <laughs> I'm not my, surprised. My body, if I know, it doesn't. Uh, and I still sleep like I, I sleep amazing. I don't have issues with sleep, so. Nope, coffee is just a, it's a blood replacement for me. <laughs> and, and Tracy, uh, it's, 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 uh, it's pulling up on 30 degrees C here in Tucson, and it isn't 8.30 in the morning yet, so. Wow. The, I, I can, I mean, of course, it gets quite hot around here as well, but it's, when, it's, when it's hot later at night, I don't appreciate it well. I, I don't mind if it's very hot during the day and at night it goes a little bit cooler, but sometimes we get these heat waves where it just stays at temperature constant during the night and then 
my body's not built for that, you know. Oh, well, then you'd love Phoenix, where at 3 in the morning, it's still 45C. No, no. <laughs> I um, I went to school in Oatsorn, so South Africa is famous for the, like, ostriches down in um, in Oatsorn, those big, scary, fast birds. And um, I remember at school, we used to have, uh, but then again, that's also like 40 years ago, okay, let's not get scary <laughs> about that. But we used to have these like fire trucks going around, sand trucks, and they'd have the alarms going. So everyone would have to go home because the tar would physically melt and run off the pavements into the road. So mm-hmm. they'd have sand trucks that runs and just uh, put sand down on the roads just to stop that tar from making little rivers. So Oatsorn did a beautiful 40 to 50 odd uh, degrees Celsius on any um, normal summer's day. Also didn't appreciate that. I'm, I'm not built for that either. So mm-hmm. I'm quite, I'm in Pretoria. So, and we have incredible weather. We have beautiful, like, neutral weather. Are we sorted? Yeah, we're, I, I don't know what happened with the, uh, with the fail on this. It was actually uh, OBS that failed. It locked up and uh, for whatever reason, we're, but we're back. So it just had a reset, but um but here we are, ready to get underway now. So with the the community questions. So uh, let's see, defrag your zebra. Excellent. That is so cute. <laughs> that is nice. Colin Decker. Hey, Sean, Colin Decker in the Netherlands this? sent this to me, or he pointed it out, so I got it online. So thanks, Colin. And before you joined, you know, in in uh, for the birthday, I wore my SharePoint shirt. So. Aww. And you All never right. took. Wow, that was a while ago. No, of course I not. And I haven't washed my hands since. Yeah, it's been ah! 20 years. I know. I should ever do. Should <laughs> All right, let's uh, jump in with the community questions. Question number one. Uh, Dan asks a uh, Microsoft 365 group question. Can you retrieve deleted Microsoft 365 groups after 30 days? The group also has seven years retention policy. Will the retention policy preserve the deleted group's contents that we can retrieve. I'm not touching that question. Over to you, Christian. <laughs> not mandling in that area. If there's a hold in place, but retention policy and a hold are two different things, right? So. Yeah, the uh, if you have a if you have the retention policy established, then you should be able to. Yeah, so you should be able to, if it was deleted, so it, it shouldn't allow you to delete that if delete you've got it, the retention yeah. <laughs> So the likely answer here is no, in your case, because it wasn't under your policy. Yeah, if it was not under the policy. Well, that's that's the thing. I think this is where more questions would be asked of at what point was it deleted, by whom was it deleted, Um was it within before or after the policy was established for that um what was the phase of the moon what day of the week was it that kind of stuff yeah right so by logically if you have a retention policy in place there's a protection in place over that it wouldn't allow you to go in and delete that and therefore it is retrievable um but there are some caveats with that depending on who you are where it is so, what rights they all have Correct. How much you paid Microsoft? That's right. Yeah, we, we, skids. As, as part of the uh, disclaimer, Christian, we should we should widely publicize the fact that it would be very helpful if people included their specific role and rights when asking questions. Well, would, that's the difference. If, if 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 we were officially like a support thing, it's like <laughs> yeah, you'd ask those those questions, but. That's part of the magic of the live stream is that we don't have all the information. We have to make certain assumptions. And well, I mean, we're not we're not asking for credit card numbers or anything. We're just just a little more detail to allow. We're not. Us... No. Okay, I'm out. Of... I know. I'm out. I thought we're giving credit, getting credit card numbers. No. Trisha, does yours still end in eight four two six? Maybe you should go ask Facebook. Uh, that's right. There you that's go. where I got it from. Now I'm just confirming. Uh, uh, I apparently I keep getting messages that all of my personal information is available on the dark web. So pretty much go get it, folks. Yeah. And turn the light on. Yeah. Yeah. Bring it out. Excellent. All right. Well, question number two Excellent. from a different Tracy. Tracy with an I, just for clarification here. 
so I created a team for our ops support group. How do I create a place where we can allow employees to submit recommendations that their submissions would be hidden from others? So they want a suggestion box, maybe a way to have an email address, uh, ones that could click on for these submissions. Need some help here. Tracy had her hand up first. I, <laughs> I'm i going to pick here. all the easy ones, people. It's just going to happen like that. So I definitely think a Microsoft list would be ideal for this. Um, and um, apart from the can of worms I opened up on social media this week about permissions in Teams, but um, I would say Microsoft list and then go to the advanced settings on that list and change um, it to item level permissions where people can only read and edit their own submissions, which is just the easiest way to do it without getting complicated. And um, clicking an email address to do it, I, I don't know, like, no, I'd say, it's just a link that they go and they add a new list item. I would definitely go a Microsoft list with unique permissions. What up, yeah, Neil? if you're looking for if you're looking for something, yeah, and there's Neil and uh, just a quick Neil intro. Neil Hodgkinson, Doctor Neil Doctor Hodgkinson, Neil Hodgkinson. <laughs> <laughs> with Microsoft. Thank you for joining, Doctors Neil. Folks. You're very welcome, Hello, Doc. Uh, the other but, chemist, but generally. Dogs. If you're looking to do something that's email based, I mean, look, you could go and create a, you know, an email inbox, give control to the admins and then have it, in, you know, um, so that nobody else would see that the admin would see that if you want it completely anonymous. I mean, it depends on what your goals are. But if your goal is to have it within Teams, uh, uh, Tracy, because we've had a variation of this question a number of times um, where people want to have just uh, only permissions, only access to those items which you initiate. And uh, yeah, FTP so that'd be a way to do it. Definitely yep. FTP. FTP. <laughs> well, that it, works. They just put, put the box in the lunchroom, folks. Come on. <laughs> with, a, uh, with, a non, with a non return valve, is that what you're saying? So it's got to be a non return valve on the box. Correct. Got it. Shredder works that right. way. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Shredder. Please, please switch it on first. Add your feedback and switch it on for the yes for the for feeding assistance. You guys are terrible. <laughs> uh, Why do you think we need the disclaimer, Tracy? <laughs> I, I get it. I get it. <laughs> so you get you get twice as much back as what you pay for with this live stream. <laughs> It's, it's so hard. Worry someone that you know there's someone yeah. somewhere in the world sitting in a basement without windows watching this just so hanging on to the fact that we might answer that one thing it's going to be the game changer for them so how often do you play that disclaimer christian i'm just like how often is it that you show that <laughs> so once again the disclaimer is up for those that are just joining us <laughs> Uh, yeah, and this time we come back Mom, to the disclaimer. Hey, and Christian, for those for those people that get twice what they pay for, twice zero is actually yeah. pretty much correct. Like, that's why I Neil, said advanced. What's our secret <laughs> volume? <laughs> that's right. Uh, it's all math these days, or is that math? Math. It's, it's all it's all math. All math. 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 Yeah. yeah. All right, uh, question number three from Meryl. And Meryl is actually, uh, what was the name of that, uh, the woman who asked the multiple questions previously, who never joined that we invited on? Can't remember. Do you remember was her name? April. Uh, was, um... No, but uh, Meryl plays that role today. I think there are two, maybe three questions uh, that she has asked here. Uh, in Outlook, if I select insert, then choose hyperlink, it will allow me to easily insert a hyperlink into my email that will assist the person to simply just click on the link and open up the file I'm referring to. Is it possible to do the same thing on Teams? I looked but did not see anywhere to insert a link. Put it where in Teams? In paste chat? it into the chat. Just paste I it. think they want a link with, uh, you know, instead of an ugly URL, they want to just take some text and make it hyperlinkable with a predetermined URL. So I'd say no, but you can just paste the link and it will go live. It'll recognize it as a URL, but you probably sometimes already give you a preview. Sometimes. Yeah. 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 Sometimes. Most of the time. When it feels like it. 
<laughs> yeah, it's, I'm still Teams old, is a old union player, so it only does things when it feels like it. Yeah, there's a. Uh, uh, I, I still like old school. Remember, you know, it just became second nature with blogging to go in and add the hypertext. Um, you know, the a href. You know, link uh, around specific text. Um, but uh, I just noticed that actually in WordPress there was an update where I used to be able to just take a link and go and highlight the text and paste directly into my editor and it would embed it with around those those keywords. But now it's doing the it's putting whatever the shortened text of the title it replaces it. So I'm it forces me to go up and use the uh, hypertext link button to add that in. But that's that's kind of the same idea of what she's looking for. But yeah, otherwise, you know, right click, add it in there uh, to replace that or to, to just have it part of that that text. I don't know, I haven't played with it uh, to see if Teams respects the hypertext link. Can you just highlight two words, paste the link? Somebody want to test that real quick? Uh, no. <laughs> Eric says no. All right. You can't. You can't. Nope. Sorry. And Teams is so succinct with its paragraph long last links, week, so too. I, yeah. I was going to say, I tried to do it last week, and it didn't work. But that was last week, so this week it might work. It all yeah, really true. just depends. Depends Computer on when you says no. Yeah. Got a job. I'll see you guys soon. Thanks. All right. Be back. Computer, yep. replace the link. <laughs> In the chat, that works. If you copy a already hyperlinked text, that works. Yeah. So if it's already in that state, then it works. But if you're grabbing a URL from a browser yeah. and selecting over words, it, it will dump in the title of that and replace it and then yeah. create the, the preview link. Yeah. Yeah, but I didn't know that. So that's worth mentioning, Tracy. <laughs> Definitely. I don't normally cut and paste hypertext in non standard URL kind of with the A and the href and everything and the text in between. If we're thinking I think you just HTML. also think, I mean, like I've spent a lot of time teaching people to use hyperlinks, even just an outlook. I mean, at certain levels, people don't even know this. And now I'm like, be careful to do that because I'm getting these emails all the time. It says click here for your proof of payment or something. So now that yeah. becomes like a second phase of learning is like first hover over it. So I think people, People are, I think these days people are just happier with an open link. I think a lot of us are just like, I don't care if it's ugly anymore. Just give me the whole thing. I want to see right. what's what. Right. Yeah, that's the uh, telltale for me. Any link that it does not match its URL on the screen. Yeah. Well, the latest thing too is, um, is we're on this topic, is getting uh, links via text. <laughs> Uh, you know, via mobile now, oh. and I just I won't click on any of those things. Yep. And and so training my wife and my kids on the same thing is like you know, if if my bank wants me to open up to change something, and I'll read that message. More than half the time, I go straight over to the website, do the proper login, and there's no update. There's nothing from my yeah. bank, and no. so there are some that are legitimate looking. And uh, so you have to be very careful. So I never click on a link uh, from uh, you know, anywhere via my mobile and very careful in those that come through email and will usually go out to that first user experience through the, through the web, do the proper login and look and see is there a, a actually a message here that I need to respond to. Yeah, there's a lot of things needed out there for that, eh? Like e safety, it's just crazy. I mean, if people like us, like sometimes look at it and think, oh, that looks legit, just imagine. Good grief. Yeah. yeah. That's where they get you when it looks legit. That's why I only click on the ones that look so obviously fake because, I mean, it's, <laughs> it's, uh, it's kind of like, um, you know, Frodo, um, who is uh, wary of, uh, of Strider in the wild when they just met him. Says I think that someone who is, you know, evil would have felt more good, and someone who he, well, he <laughs> looks foul but feels good. I don't know. I mean, oh, Three percent of the listening population <laughs> got that reference. Yeah, and the uh, other Lord of the Rings geek just butchered my Lord of the Rings. Sorry, sorry, folks. <laughs> All right, let's jump to question number four. 
Roper asks, uh, what do you need to participate in a Teams meeting? Do you need a Microsoft account or will any email work? Wi Fi. Uh, basically, your browser. Good touch. <laughs> <laughs> Wi Fi. What to say, Hal? Well, Sorry. she's got as good a, good an answer as any, but you need a browser. <laughs> you need a browser. Maslow's yeah. hierarchy yeah. of need. You know, at the bottom of that pyramid is Wi Fi. Wi Fi, then browser. Mm -hmm. Well, and you, could, you could actually do an RJ45 cable, too, for that matter. But, uh, is a pulse so necessary? That would be helpful. Absolutely. An, a, a, an right. internet connection is necessary. That's all you yeah. need. Yes. Uh, you modem and a phone line, man. I was going to say yeah, that, that you have too. to have the desire. You have to want it. But that's not true. <laughs> you don't have to want I'm gonna it. I'm going to get the non-sarcastic answer. Non sarcastic answer. No, you don't need a Microsoft 365 account. You just click the link and you join it. For those that I was actually looking for an answer. Yeah, and Roper, yeah, yeah. we're not trying to make fun of you Such or anything. We're just, we're, we're just having we're having fun with with questions. So the only stupid question is the question never asked. Of course, that's no, not true. Remember, there are no stupid questions. Just stupid people. <laughs> what holds there? That's we're just we're making friends friends we're building an audience here good job sean excellent i'm gonna well have to go done. drink some antacid tablets just to be able to manage the conversations that's right drink down the antacids yes uh question number five uh bawa hey there's tums right there um, ask, uh, you have any idea how to split or connect or link Microsoft Access Database to SharePoint? Oh, wow. nah, you can do yeah, well, even Access Services uses the database embedded in a row, so it's it, it, there's not a, um, there's no way to easily transfer that. What is I that? just Googled it What's and there is steps to do it, so, but I've never worked with it. I did once. It actually was pretty slick, but not scalable. Yeah, that's your problem, scalability. And like you say, Sean, if you go down the access services route, access services is, you know, if it, it that's deprecated anyway. So yeah, you, you're kind of you're kind of digging yourself into a hole. Yeah, is there anything hap I've not heard anything in a while. Is it just that it's deprecated? Is there any life to that? Are they ending the the product? It I. It, Go ahead, Neil. Well, I I know what's yeah, yeah, I know it's NDA. I can't say it. Okay. You you guys as MVPs will know it anyway. You should do. It's something like right? Did you say anything? It's something? I guess not. Find the answer. <laughs> well, that's that's the thing. We have to be be careful with what we know and what we think we know and what's public and uh -huh. yeah. So hey, by the way, Neil, I like your background. I noticed the Keith Ritchie artwork. Yeah. Yeah, I've had it on for a few for a few weeks now. Um, and has my my um, inspirational statements as I walk towards my where I sit and work because I work in the kitchen now. I'm working at home because the office is occupied by Amy. Um, I have my inspirational statements on the wall, which is be you, keep life simple and do more of what makes you happy. Good advice. Excellent. Well, I love that. Well, it, for those that aren't familiar, so uh, 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 Keith Ritchie, so longtime SharePoint community guy, who's also a musician, and uh, his uh, album. So I, so I ordered the uh, the CD, uh, the pre-ordered that, but I also went back and I did the double the double vinyl as well. So yeah, I want the I pretty, got that. yeah. Waiting so waiting it, yeah. for that stuff to ship. Yep, mm -hmm. very cool stuff. So if you've not checked out Keith Ritchie, make sure you go and check that out. All right, let's jump to the next question uh, six. Now, Adam starts out his question the way I like questions to start out. He says, weird one. Uh, He's I addressing you. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> it should be a capital O, weird one. <laughs> Hello, weird one. I changed my Windows <laughs> password this morning after having launched Microsoft Teams. After the change, I noticed that some channels in some teams were empty of content even though I was getting notifications for said channels. I logged out of Microsoft Teams, closed the app, launched it again, and logged back in again, all content returned. Anyone else had this one? 
Welcome to Microsoft Teams. Yeah, well, you All know, when you change your password, those refresh tokens don't work so well. So. Well, the other thing that, that I know that I started to see a bunch of messages where people were complaining that you know they were having problems and there was the outage again that happened um, a week ago. And so that's something else to be aware of too. I mean, we've noticed some patterns of behavior when there are one, when there's outage, two, when there are updates that are happening in your tenant, we start to experience strange behavior mm -hmm. where give it a little time, log out, log back in, and those because changes may be completed. Yeah, re restart and seems to times. solve those issues. You know, the problem that I had a week ago was something that we talked about months ago, where I went into a meeting, Teams meeting that I created, invited somebody in, went to hit record, and record was missing from the options. Yep. I logged out, logged back in. I could see the record button, but it was grayed out and tried logging out and in a couple times. It was still grayed out. We ended up canceling the meeting. I went over to Zoom, recorded the interview. That was last week? Like I week eventually, ago, yeah. I mean, I thought maybe it was because I was logged into multiple tenants, you know, in, um, in like different uh, profiles. I eventually closed everything. I eventually rebooted my machine. I went to the meeting options. It says I'm not the organizer of the meeting. It was just, so what I eventually did is I not unlike you who jumps over to Zoom, I opened PowerPoint and I just recorded the meeting. So I put it out there. Yeah, it's creative. Nicely done, Tracy. But yeah, I had exactly the same problem. But that happens often, Christian. That that whole where it suddenly doesn't recognize me and I don't know who you are and stop pushing my buttons happens to me all the time. I don't know if I'm the common denominator, but no, I think that's a fairly common that's a common issue. Unless the problems that you cause are global, Tracy, is that what you're claiming? Or it's possible. <laughs> it's possible. But it's, we don't know until there's more data. I mean, we we really don't know. So, yeah, I'm not going to take that risk. <laughs> so, so Adam, kind of the answer to the question, uh, you know, it, it's a so there could be a number of factors that are happening there. I mean, obviously, it's something that's ongoing, and you do you, you continue to experience that. Check to make sure that the service health. Uh, what's happening with your tenant, your environment, you can log a ticket, but by the time somebody responds, it will likely be resolved. Um, that's just one of the nuances of working with teams uh, with its, you know, the, the, the cloud updates that it's uh, it likely there was an update happening. Something was going on with your tenant that impacted the service. That would be my we guess. Have so many different yeah. sources of, uh, irregularity and outages now that you've got to have be almost be a semi-professional troubleshooter to truly nail these things down it's not worth it most of the time to go through all of that it's just walk away for a bit or shift to something else it's why sean has the bottle of tums sitting on his desk <laughs> exactly and 15 in the drawer <laughs> well back up you have redundancy good for you of course i've got redundancy yeah i know uh, all right, uh, question number seven from Tomas. I am new in SharePoint and our company Sorry. would like to keep records of absence and vacations in SharePoint online calendar. We have one calendar for a team of 12 people. I would like to set permissions for all users to allow them to only create new events and edit events when they created uh, uh, what they created earlier. I want to prevent to delete or edit events created by another user. I can see a set of predefined permissions, but none of them allow me to make what I want exactly. Is there another choice? Does anyone yes. remember the, fan, the, the Fab 40 that had the calendar oh, template in it? <laughs> oh, <laughs> sorry, sorry, don't beat me. Well, that, that unique or item level permissions is not going to work if they want everyone to be able to see the whole calendar. So I would just clap a power automate in there and write all of it to another calendar and mark that as read only where people can see the final items. That's what I would do. Well, there is that list setting that you can adjust so that I can edit only the items I create, right? Yeah, so, so, yeah you're right, you because you, could, you could still see. Yeah. Oh, I forgot now, I thought for a moment they won't be able to see the others, but you can, yeah. it's separate. So you can set it to view all, but only edit own. Yeah, you need yeah. permissions on advanced. Yep. 
preventing the deletion. And so you could do that with a SharePoint list. There's a, isn't there a new, I'm not going to look uh, in the, the list app as well. I mean, which is again, just a SharePoint list, but you've got that calendar view there as well. You could build a custom permission level, but that removes delete. Yeah, yeah I, I know. Look, you get what you want with the if it's you know, if you can view all. Um, the the question is if with that view and you can only edit and it's the uh, item level permissions once they're created, just to ensure that that is working as designed. You know, one, if I can see it. And click on it. What's that experience? If I if, it, if I'm not able to edit, then you get you got it. Okay. Uh, question number eight. Marson asked, "I want to find out the number of emails sent and received by a single mailbox for a whole year. Any tips to accomplish this?" I bet you Viva is going to tell everyone all of that soon. <laughs> Real soon, like right away, right? And send an update to your boss every Monday. <laughs> Along with the feed from your webcam. And how many, you know, the specifically what you were doing in the webcam when you were not responding immediately to your manager's emails. And your top ten. Or, your, or your, your direct like ratio between number of times consumed versus email sent. <laughs> to kind of work that, that and then sends out the Power report. BI. So you would yeah, get, you know, yeah. It's got, it's got a button right. on the Tom's bottle that converts it to part all, of the article. It all comes together, people, all of these things. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, so to retrieve all of that, I mean, that, so that's kind of the, the process of the, you know, doing a, you know, that discovery, the e-discovery process to be able to go back over that. So one, you know, what are your retention levels? What, what's your, your, you know, of that, of that content? Um, so you can find it if you're retaining all of that that data and then doing that e-discovery to be able to go and find all those on a specific email account over uh, that that set of time. Could it actually do sent and receive though, or just counts? Like count of number of items? I don't know if we, I mean, you can put this probably a way to tell them where you can get it, but because sent and received is can be different to the you know the total number, especially if um, people use the uh, clean up my mailbox function. That's going to start cleaning things out and make them yep. into single threaded items. So there's a that need. Oh no, I'm not. No, I'm not an exchange person. I'm not. I'm not offering to investigate that. Sean, did you share something that's relevant there? Yeah, on the last question, just. Do you okay. see how he, uh, he adds the word relevant when he asks you if you have something to share that's relevant? <laughs> I've learned. I've learned that lesson. <laughs> well, because that's what they say to me, Tracy. <laughs> <laughs> All the time. Hey, smoking's open. Thanks, Hal. Seeing as everyone's in my um, room at the moment, I'm going to vape. Anyone got a problem with vape? You want to throw a disclaimer up on the screen there, Christian? You want to quickly put that up there? Um, do we have no, – there's nothing about uh, – here, but uh, yeah, the uh, but the, the the quality of what you experience here is all uh, quote unquote. It depends. So I and think that clean, kind of it's clean mint. Up. By the way, clean mint. I always do clean mint on Mondays when it's a public holiday. And other days it's dirty mint. What? I don't know what that stuff is. Yeah, it's catnip on other days remember they keep on locking down like weed and alcohol sales in south africa so i'm on catnip at the moment <laughs> oregano oregano <laughs> all the kids are doing it's the oregano now it, it, it's oregano <laughs> Lord of the home, right? <laughs> the West Gordon Ramsay, that's exactly you're right you're doing. right neil <laughs> my, my homeopath put me onto it <laughs> uh-huh Oh, All right, uh, question number nine, Angelito says, uh, hello, good morning. Where can I find a manual where all the tools or help to create, design, and manage a site and teams? Help me, please. <laughs> Docs.microsoft.com. I don't agree. SharePoint documentation. I don't agree. Sorry, Microsoft. I don't think the tr training content that's out there includes everything. So what do you point to? The product, it's, the product yeah. works, but how to use it well, that's questionable. 
Yeah. But yes, docs.microsoft or forward slash help inside of Teams gives you a little bit of it. It's got the admin training in there and stuff as well. But the technical side of it, yes. Yeah. Well, the adoption site has more of the softer stuff in it. So that Softer stuff. Did different... you just say that? Softer stuff? Yeah. Did you just say that, Christian? <laughs> did. I did. Yeah, yeah. Softer stuff. Well, it's a, so technical. It's, it's more of the, you know, how to use it, best practices. Um, so playbooks gives you uh, scenarios. Stuff. <laughs> yeah well yeah the the actual usage information that you want um but that's where i mean i'll i'll generally point people to uh a, a, the adoption site before i'll point them to docs uh and then obviously there's a number of sources that are out there but i mean so tracy i mean so with the training and stuff that you do i mean what are the your kind of go-to sources for teams training where do you point people my blog I'm serious. I mean, I'm not yeah. putting Microsoft oh, down. Microsoft for me, it, it covers the like 60% of the technical stuff, but the, that's yeah. going to show you how to create 150 channels. Should you? I don't know. Right. So my stuff kind of deals more with the like business and like what you shouldn't do. I think that's that's the bigger thing. So for me, it's a mix between that. It's uh, between the Microsoft content. They definitely have. I mean, the adoption resources, they've jacked up quite a lot. And they also, and I can't remember what it's called, that SharePoint lookbook, that new template that they deployed has got a resource that it mentions on it. Let me quickly find it. Um, you know that remote working stuff? So Microsoft's brought out a whole new bunch of like remote working type of scenario based training as well, which yeah. I think could be valuable. I've got to just link. Is that not less linked, linked off the adoption site yet? I know it's going there, but I don't know if it's up there yet. What, one of the other things I'll just put, one of the sites or the, the groups of uh, content, I will often push people towards is towards the Regarding 365 team, of which Tracy is a member of. Uh, I'm on the outside periphery of that that group, but I've done some things. I'm that not have been a member of the group anymore, but I also, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, but the, a lot of great content through uh, the, 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 the collective I guess you'd call it of of people of profiles that build content around that. Um, there's a lot of lot of great content that way. That's very business focused. So it's the application of the technology, not just how to do something, yeah. but it's why, why you should do it or not do it. Not do it. Yeah, I think the same is with mine. I think most of my blogs and stuff is is on what not to do, because there's enough what to do things out there. So. Yep. Yep. Well, if you find that other other link, okay, um, I'll carry on looking. I've got sidetracked. Just post it into the chat, and I'll uh, I'll make sure that I include the link within the blog post as well. Well, do yeah. There's yeah. There are some great resources that are out there for that. Well, let's uh, jump to question number ten. Muhammad asks, "I purchased eighteen business premium licenses for my employees. I would like to know that how do I send a single email to all of them at once? I just googled and tried to figure out with Yammer, but did not." get enough can anyone share a tutorial and so this is one of those where is it is there a trick to the question you've got 18 people that are employees create a dl and then email them uh-huh that would seem to be the right thing to do i would say yes yeah. so if they if it doesn't exist a group for it of course they pretty soon would i mean they might have a a, a team that everyone's in but um but don't forget i mean we're saying 18 now but it could be a random it could be a ram, random number of people at any given time so don't forget i'll call that quick steps as an outlook um because you don't have to go and create a group uh, or a contact group and outlook anymore you can just create a quick step and whenever you press that button it does whatever you want it to yep. do so that's quite a cool thing to use for mailing specific people as well yep i like that if you're in, in teams being able to go in and create a a tag as well, uh, and have yeah. members that follow that. So yeah. if it's you know project based tags or or you know areas of expertise, you could have like an all office tag, and any new employees come in, add them to that, and then broadcast those messages out via Teams. So there's a number of ways that you can do that depending on the collaboration style of your organization. Um, but I interpreted that initially as uh, an email, an email blast out to 
your new employees, like create a DL for all employees. Yeah. So, all right. Doesn't have to be any more complicated than that. Um, all right. Uh, I'll question number that link for you. Oh. oh, you got, you did grab it. What was the, what is the link? It's hybrid workplace guides. So, um, look, I don't think there's admin type of stuff in there, but, um, it's definitely focused not on the products, but more on achieving specific things, I suppose. Okay. So, but definitely not admin type, but it was also a nice resource that I came across. Very nice. Well, I'll make sure to add that into the links for the questions and paste that in. All right, uh, number 11, Selena <laughs> asked, uh, I am still, again, one of my, the, I love these intros to some of these questions. I am still wallowing in SharePoint uncertainty. We I am not are. familiar and cannot wrap my head around if the SharePoint we are setting up is going to be able to do what everyone wants. Uh, will we be able, see that's that's part of, that's good. That's it's a healthy operational focus. Like you, that you want that, that state of constant change. Like we always want to improve it because we're not sure if we did it right. Let's, let's see what we can do better. Uh, that's that iterative approach. Uh, will we be able to post forms and documents for vendors outside the agency to download? If permission is given, will external vendors be able to make changes and repost the new version? So Selena is asking, can we post documents externally and then the outside people, will they be able to edit and repost new versions? Two part question. Yeah. So, two questions rather. Will they be able to get to them to download? Yes. If they're, if accounts are created for them in your environment, or you grant them external access into yeah. that site. Now, whether or not they'll be able to make changes and repost the new version depends on the permission configuration for the list. So, what you're tr seeking to do is certainly possible and doable within the platform, but it will require a little bit of setup. Yep. And one workaround for that, if you have a policy as an organization that doesn't allow external sharing or in what can be edited and shared if it's view only externally, but you need something that external people have the ability for this one document uh, to be able to collaborate with them, is that's one great use case for OneDrive. Yep. And so creating a unique unique permissions for those individuals or a group to that folder that they can do that. Um, I would time bomb it. Um, so if edits need to have within the next seven to 10 days and then the window closes. I get that all the time where I'll send out uh, where people like, hey, I gotta no longer edit this. Like, hey, that was out there for 14 days, <laughs> you know, yeah. your response. Yeah. And, uh, and so it, it's, uh, and I'm fine with that a little bit of overhead of having to go back in and reshare that out with a new link to those individuals. Um, but that I know that it's not just floating out there open. Yeah, and even the reshare feature, you know, you can always go into Outlook. If it's OneDrive, you can always go into that functionality, you know, shared with me, and you yep. can find it yourself. I always try and go and look for it myself before I go nag the person that I think sent it to me and ask him to resend it. Yep. Exactly. All right. Um, do, do, do. Question number 12. We're back with Meryl. Uh, Meryl asks, uh, is there a way to save a document directly from email to Teams? So not the email, but a document shared via email to Teams. The email has a link when clicked, it opens the document as a PDF. I had to save the document first to my computer, then to Teams. Just wondering if there's a way to save the document to Teams instead of first to my computer. So the challenge there is if it's just a link in the document, you still have to open it because it opens up that PDF in the web, right? So, because of course, if it was an attachment on the email, it would have been easy to just, uh, I don't know, set up a rule and it just claps the document straight to Teams. But um, there was an update this week. I see that, uh, I think Mark Cashman or someone shared something about that being easier. But if that library is of course synced to your Explorer, it's much easier to just right click and save it straight into that folder. 
I know that there are updates that are happening to yeah. sharing, you know, across the board. I don't know what we can talk about, so I'm not going to get into anything more than that. There are updates happening with share, and there have been. I mean, they've been cleaning up the sharing experience. Something we have talked about. It was a couple, been a couple years now, but where it used to be that, like, you go in and click on share in in OneDrive versus SharePoint versus Word versus you know OneNote. And there'd be different dialogue boxes, different experiences entirely, different options available. And so they've tried to make that a consistent experience. And they are looking at scenarios like this where we're trying to not send around, uh, you know, attachments. And of course, if there's attachment in email, I, I believe you could just drag and drop that attachment directly yeah. into Teams. But if it's you're sending as a link, which you should do, um, and you have more control over that and the the history, all those kinds of things. Um, but if if that comes across that they're to be able to go in and right click on that link and be able to share that into a team, that would be an awesome option to have that just to further streamline that process. You might be able to get that with a power automate flow too. <clears throat> With the Power Automate flow, is it would it just go and automate the download the locally and then upload the process? So it'd be a multi-step process. Just you'd have to just programmatically. No, you'd set up a flow that would basically take the take any email that was from wherever with attachment, whatever, and have it pull the attachment and dump it into Teams. Well, yeah, attachment, right? But link. But if it's a link. Yeah, you got a problem. Yeah. So yeah, so it's uh, what's so the answer I guess on this one is uh, not quite today. They still had to do that two step process with the link. Yeah. Yep. All right. Uh, question number thirteen. Um, Hlaing says, "How can I delete private chat messages?" Oh, that's a fun one. Do you provision you, teams? And, no, you can. <laughs> there you is can. a policy actually in the team in Teams admin. Um, there's a I forget what it, exactly how it's phrased. It's like delete or edit. De 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 delete or edit. <clears throat> now the person you sent it will know you deleted it. You can't fix that. And it's, it, I'm presuming when he's talking about private chat, he's talking like one on one ping between yeah. maybe him and one of a, a coworker or something like that, as opposed yeah. to a chat in a, a group. And it's possible, but only if your company's enabled it in the policy yeah. that Teams have in Teams admin. So be, because the nature of a private chat is that it's a it's a peer to peer, so both of you will have a history of your participation in that chat. So if Neil, you you delete your account and are gone, I still have a record of our chat that we participated in, you know, in in my history. Um, yep. So there's no way for you to go in and also delete it on my side. But is what you're saying if we're both members of the same company and have that private chat, um, and have it established that even as a private chat, you'd be able to go in as a company. Yeah, if the, pol if the policy is enabled for, we can probably look it up and find a link. Um, if, it, if, we, if the policy is enabled to allow delete and edit chat, then you should be able to delete and edit from a one-to-one -one chat as well, assuming you're in the same organization. Yeah, you definitely can. Sorry, Neil. No, I was going to say the only thing is that the person will know that you sent something and then deleted it. Yeah. Also, so then what, the, after, what, you say? what the <laughs> yeah, eye has seen, the eye can never unsee, right? So that's also a question uh -huh. of whether they've actually read it already or not, because otherwise it just says message has been deleted. You're right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. At least it's not as bad as it, it does actually delete the messages and that you're, you're you know, it, it's gone from the, the, the group chat. It's not like where uh, I'm sure we all do this when you get those those emails where it says, um, please do not open or read the previously sent no, erroneously I mean, sent email. Yeah. What does everybody do? <laughs> of course, you go and open that. That's right. I know. Yep. That's where that that's, Just, that I mean, is I mean, the exact I mean, scenario where half the companies have accidentally shared out financial information. <laughs> yeah. 
and if you're and if you're also the one thing the other thing to consider is that from a from a compliance standpoint that message still exists somewhere right yeah yeah the equivalent of firing Salted a flare gun and sounding an air horn <laughs> this has been pulled back okay oh, yeah, right. golf club and shouting four it's too late <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see, number 14, a longer one. It's a SharePoint question. Uh, Jeff asks, uh, I have a user that has a document in SharePoint online. They were making changes for hours, uh, the local Excel app. They noticed at one point, the file name of the saved document changed and added a 002 at the end. He then went and renamed the document. Uh, during the, this, changes that were made were lost. The version history does not show any changes during the time he was modifying the document. Audit log does not show any changes, and there were no files with the 002. I want to say this is user error, and he just saw the 002, but this is one of my power users, so I question this. However, I have never heard of a 002 being added to a file name as the autosave. Um, anyone else heard or seen anything like this? Uh, I'm only going with what the user was explained by the user seems a bit strange. I think it's a new document. Yeah. Yeah, something he he changed something. I mean, I've had that sort of thing happen, fooling with fooling with the, having several Excel files open. Uh, if I'm moving, doing something with one that I'm going to put into the other, if I'm not careful, you wind up creating yeah. a new document in the process. And uh, that gives you the subset that dot zero zero the zero zero two <clears throat> or zero zero three or whatever. Yeah. Um, and um, if you rename that, you blow everything that you've done away. Yeah. And well, yeah. history should be in that other document, depending on where it's saved and going and finding where that's saved. Well, except that, that I think if you change the file name, what you're doing is overwriting the original. So you you've lost you've lost. It, it. actually doesn't. I don't agree, Hal. So if you rename the file name, it's a change to the document. It actually keeps the previous, I'm speaking on a correction, but this is how I've seen it. Okay. It keeps the original version history, absolutely. I fully think that that's a brand new file that got loaded, brand new file. That's why it doesn't mm. have the history because the rename is just an edit on the document. It actually tracks it. It shows you where the document's been um, renamed. But wait, we've got to think about this quickly. Think you might actually. So if you if you remove someone's delete rights on a library, okay, they can't rename documents, which actually tells you that when a document's renamed, it's a new document. So you're actually right, Hal. It doesn't. The rename doesn't keep it. I'm I'm redacting my previous statement. I'm sorry. A rename is a brand new document because SharePoint actually deletes the old document and recreate and creates a new one. That's why people who don't have How delete you, rights can't rename. How did you rename it? I mean, it mentions rename, but like, because you'd have to, you can't rename an open document. Well, I would, I, I don't think they would have been able to rename it if the document was open. Mm -hmm. Saying a but, local Excel app, so I'm assuming it's on a system and it's being synchronized to SharePoint via mm -hmm. the sync agent, which if yeah. you do a rename, it does a SharePoint delete before it uploads the new document. Yeah, I want to go test that quickly. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm sorry, Al, you were right, because I just remembered it doesn't see it as the same document if it's renamed, so it would lose. But you know, that's how the rename happened. A few years back, I mean, there, there was, I know there was some discussion and there's a lot of complexity around it, and, and it, obviously um, it doesn't work this way, but to maintain some level of parent-child relationship between those documents and versions, just as a, like a timestamp, the historical that, you know, document 002 came from this other one. So you can almost kind of trace your, the, the, the path of things. And, uh, and you'd almost have to do it because, you know, there's so many of us that will reuse, rename, and use certain documents as a template. And so you don't want to have just this hundreds of versions. There would be a, you know, limit to what it would kind of track, but there'd be a way of kind of retracing the path uh, the original author or owner uh, of of those pieces, but I'd recommend to Jeff to go into OneDrive on the web and check the recycle bin. That's a point. Uh, that's a good yeah. call. That's how I'm point. going back on my statement, so I'm going to say again that I wasn't wrong. I just renamed it, and it actually keeps it as a version. 
<laughs> I just listen. Sometimes you have locally. to prove yourself right and wrong in one sentence. Okay. An MVP uh, is entitled to change their mind as well. Let's just get that I, out there. I just. What's just confusing is the fact, like I said, that when people don't have delete rights, they can't rename the document, which which has always proven to me that SharePoint actually deletes the document and recreates a document. But I just checked it. I renamed the document and it keeps on tracking the version. So I think that's a brand new document. That would make sense. Anyway. Well, so that's a kind of a question to Jeff is to go back and check with the user and see if that is if that other file exists out there on the system. Yeah, check the OneDrive recycle bin online. And if it's not yeah. there, check the second stage recycle bin. Yeah, that's a that's another yeah, that's another uh, another scenario where having a more granular third party backup also comes into play. So if you have <laughs> questions about that, come and talk to me. I know. Wow. All right. Uh, question number 15. Um, let's see, Jose. Is there a way to turn off the message when someone joins and exits the meeting? Settings, notifications. Uh, it's just not the it's on the meeting. It's for the you know, the, the meeting uh, organizer can establish that whether they get those notifications yeah. or not. It's on the meeting, yeah. And that's quite nice now because it's actually in the meeting before we had to change it on the invite. And now you can actually change it in the meeting, which is quite cool. Yeah. Yeah, super annoying when people leave that on. And uh, yeah, that's what I often I often think like uh, uh, I I want to say that uh, one maybe two of the MVP summit sessions where they yeah. left that on, and I just thought this is a uh, yeah this is a vendor that's helping manage these the, the event for Microsoft that are relatively new to teams and didn't know to turn that off. Super annoying. Um, so yes, you could do turn that off. Uh, 16, uh, Darren asks, is there any way to link a website to a tab in Teams that saves credentials for that site rather than having to enter it every time? Saves credentials? Yeah, so if you are, so I have uh, a number of teams that I that I work with, especially with external users, where we will go and add uh, you know, other external websites or sites as a tab. So all of the tools that are necessary for that project team have everything in tabs. Uh, and so if you, yeah, if you log out, log back in, you have to go and essentially log in to each of those environments for the tabs. Now, if you leave Teams open all day long, you don't have to log back in mm -hmm. unless there's timeouts specifically on those individual applications. But otherwise, there is no, because you're talking about credentials into other applications that have their own permissions and rules around it, um, you could be have to re-log in to those tabs if you refresh or shut down and come back into that team. And that's where yeah. something like, uh, yeah. Uh, I have single sign on call it Rambox comes in helpful. Another yeah, layer of integration on top. Right. Yep. But even Rambox, that there are like I will have on a regular basis have to go re log into those individual applications, uh, even though I have Rambox open all day long with all of the various tools. But Teams is much the same way. If I'm, I leave Teams on all day long, I'm chatting, I do all those things. Uh, but if I have a Jira login, if I have a, you know, whatever, these other third-party applications no. have their own rules. So if they're external to the Microsoft ecosystem, you could have to log back into those things. There's no place to store those credentials. But uh, what do you think the difference would be between the desktop app and the web? So do you think if, um, if you opened those teams in the web that your web would cache those credentials for the user? I was just wondering. Windows credential yeah. cache. Well, not the Windows credentials, but whatever app that is, but whether the web browser, because you know the web browser obviously caches credentials as well, whether if they have that scenario a lot, if it won't be easier to use the web browser version of Teams, I'm just wondering. Yeah. Right, but in Windows 10, there's a credentials cache yeah. that houses all of those that you can selectively delete, and that's one of the common troubleshooting 
steps yeah. when uh, yeah. trying to fix a log on issue. So that's I think that's the basis of the question is like, why doesn't Teams do something similar as the browser experience? Come on, Teams. Let me let us down again. <laughs> yeah, so um, so Darren, um, I don't believe so. So there's not a way to cache those credentials within a tab within Teams. Um, not today. Is that a default like answer that you have as well? Not today. Yeah, okay. not in this 15 minute stretch while we've been talking. Yeah, that's right. Um, yeah, restart the application at the end of this live stream, and who knows? <laughs> <laughs> and then blog about it. Uh, yeah, and let us all know. Yeah. Um, question number 17. Uh, Merrill again. I think this is the last one from Merrill. Uh, can you make a file private so that only certain members in a group can view it? So this is essentially that another version of that that question. We get a version of this, whether it's lists or files or what have you. So yes. And what application or what system? Or are you saying generically blanket answer? Yes. For everything. Well, if if you think of you know the file based permissions in uh, an Excel spreadsheet or a Word doc, see typically, and that's where well, I shouldn't even give my opinion yet, but of course I'm going to anyway. Typically, that's where people will go and create a private channel, which I just know, and then um, or go and change the permissions on the document, which I also think is bad practice. So I would rather just share a link with them out of my OneDrive for that specific document, um, yeah. or have it in a group chat, or. Well, like like anything, it's, it depends on what you want to do. Um, like, uh, again, in that scenario we were discussing earlier with uh, people in finance, accounting, sharing out uh, information broadly by mistake, and then trying to um, pull back in those uh, sent emails. Uh, and, and one of the ways to correct that is to lock it at the document where it's so sensitive. Yeah. You want to be very careful around that. But if you're working with collaborating with a limited set of people and want to uh, ensure that you don't have that type of mistake made, uh, you know, a private channel is a great example of, of uh, locking that down. And so having a, just a very specific group of people that have access to that sensitive information. The problem with that is, is that they end up creating private channels all over the show where it could have just been a separate team for that same audience. I mean, it's just, I'm, I'm busy doing an audit for a company at the moment that's a disaster. There's private channels created for a single document, a single document. I mean, that's just crazy. So, so you're right. I mean, why not go back to what we did before? Why not put a password on that? Have it between all the other documents and then in a group chat say, guys, the password for that document, you know, when you open it is what, what, what? It's the easiest way to do it without complicating it. But no, private channels, everyone screamed for it and now we have it. Holy moly. <laughs> so well, thank goodness I, for that. since I understand more. how Tracy feels about private channels, no, I really, I've got a major issue with it. Anyway, moving on swiftly, I won't shut up about it. So, Tracy, you're pretty <laughs> excited about shared channels then? We'll see. Poke the bear. I know, that's what I'm trying to do. It's designed to evoke an emotional response, as always. This is just don't, a... Don't, uh, don't, poke, don't poke a South African children. She'll throw a lion at you or something. Matthew. Your mind. So what's the name? What's the what's the name of the test in Blade Runner? What is it called? Um, the Void Camp test. Is that it? Yeah, I think whatever. Yeah, at the beginning of it. Yeah, that was designed to evoke an emotional response out of the androids. Yeah, that's what this whole. That, that's what this live stream is all about. So, we're trying to uh, get yeah, all the, the, uh, the get all the androids to. Uh, to uh, identify themselves. Uh, all right, let's see. Uh, where are we? Um, oh, uh, number 18, Christopher asks, is there any way to export the chat history of a Teams meeting? That question actually came up during Ignite. Um, 
And the answer was uh, A, no. B, there might be a third party app that'll do that, or C, copy and paste. Yeah. Or D, um, soon, or what did you say? What's that answer that you always use, Christian? What, tomorrow? Maybe tomorrow? It, de it depends, possibly. Yeah. yeah. We don't know. Or snipping tool. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. No, I think the official response to this is that's great feedback. <laughs> yeah. I think that's I how would, Microsoft. I, 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 we've I, never I, heard I, that I, before. Yeah. I mean, the data's out there, so they look through the graph. Um, well, that's we're going to wait. Yeah. We, we're going to wait. And if we get to the point where we realize that allowing that feature can cause a lot of damage, then we're going to deploy it. <laughs> <laughs> Such a cynical uh, outlook. I love it. But it, so this goes back to well, the the, the reality is that um, you know Microsoft, the idea that chat is IP that needs to be captured and protected, and uh, and and all of that is it's relatively new to Microsoft. And so there there have been in third party chat applications, of course, capabilities in other webinar platforms, the ability to export that up because it's an information asset that is tied to is in context of the video content um and like just in this this chat like look we'll we'll generate out of stream a a transcript from this that we'll have available will be searchable um but all of the links the all the conversation anything that we you know add into that per that timestamp of that recording is important intellectual property that should have the same uh, you know, ability to go and back that up, to store that, to do something with that, make it searchable. So Microsoft yeah. needs to make that exportable. Yeah. If that's not on sure. the roadmap. I don't know. That's one of the, I, I would be surprised if, if it's not in the roadmap or at least not requested out in user voice. <laughs> yes, user, user voice. voice. What do we know about user voice? Why do you laugh about user voice? <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, I love uh, these chats with you all. It just makes yeah. me feel less crazy. Yeah. Less. Not not less. crazy, just less. I said Correct. less, yeah. I know. That's what we all have to be accurate for all of us, yes. Uh uh, number 19, Robert asks, I have a question regarding offline address book in Exchange Online. We recently started migrating from Exchange 2013 to Exchange Online, and we're now in a hybrid environment. We are having a problem with offline address book. It never downloads. And when we go to send or receive and try to download, it explicitly doesn't download. It's always stuck at processing. We tried almost everything. We even have a case with Microsoft, and yet it's not solved. Anyone have any creative ideas? Help. I think if you go to the pictures library on your computer and you find that little gif, that's that little wheel that turns that says working on it. If you delete that, see if it makes a difference. I know. No, Just I don't bypass. Know. Sorry, I don't that's know. Right. I don't know. Exchange, no, not my thing. Sorry. It's, it's like it's, it's like when all of the um uh, uh, you know the the the, uh, the 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 filters where they're the air filter stuff on your vehicle is uh, like the computer is setting it off. Well, you then bypass it. You know, just straight in, pump out the black smoke out of the back of your vehicle, <laughs> but at least you're running. That's how South African does everything. So I don't know what the problem with that is. I'm just taking my uh, all of my auto repair and the guidance out of kind of a Mad Max slash Star Wars perspective. <laughs> Hit it with a hammer house. until it works. A wrench. Yeah. Just you know, you don't have time to go into Tashi Station to pick up power converters. Bypass it. <laughs> well, my bike has had an overall since this COVID thing started. It's all like equipped for zombie apocalypse stuff now let me tell you that <laughs> do you have tracy do you have spikes on your wheels yet so there's you absolutely getting do and i've got this button that pushes out little knives and a little basket to catch the head everything I've, i'm quite like wax on those bikes let me tell you what what i've learned again not personal experience but that you don't want to on a bike like that 
to have the flamethrowers in front because depending on the volume of wind, how fast you're going, that's bad. You want it to face backwards. So of course, that's, in, that's it. That's in my best practices guide. So I'll I will provide that guidance when you write that that guide. Absolutely, and all knives and like things as well must be from body to the back, not to the front, because of like the visor. It really messes up the visor and stuff, you know. You know, there aren't enough guides out there, PDFs of like post-apocalyptic, um, you know, former information worker best practices. I should do like, that. What like can hybrid? we take from our knowledge today? Because <laughs> that's <for post -apocalypse? laughs> how to hybrid your mo motorcycle. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Lots of downloads. There's, a, there's a real, there's a really interesting book out there. Um, I don't know if you've seen it. It's the, it's the, it's the how to be a poor man's James Bond. Like how to develop the kind of like equipment that James Bond uses. But do oh, absolutely. Oh, <laughs> Sorry, that's a definite disclaimer point. <laughs> Got it. Not a, Volume one. Not a recommended <laughs> read. <laughs> yep. Is it like yeah, is it as high quality as that? Like uh, what is it? Um, like um, seeing what's it about the giant ships? Do you guys know what I'm talking about? The one that got giant stuck ships. in the Suez Canal. What? No, there's just uh, there's a yeah. I'll have to go and find the the link. Then I can make a, yeah. the funnier joke about it. All um, right, let's uh, let's jump over to question number twenty, Rosella says I created a new account on Office 365, but cannot open and use Outlook. The system says 500 an issue occurred. The access to Outlook on the web has been blocked by the organization. Do you have any idea on how to solve this issue? I just put a link in the chat window, I think. I'll I put, put one in link. too. Yeah. It can be, that access to Outlook, Outlook, Outlook web access can be disabled by your admin. Permit on a per mailbox basis. It may be that her, if she's created a new account, she has a new mailbox. Therefore, maybe that there's they're using like um, whitelisting mailboxes that can use Outlook, and therefore the new account doesn't have that access. She probably needs to talk to her admin. Yeah, I wasn't able to find that exact error message, but uh, I found it basically the same thing Neil did. Okay. Which is in there throws a you know five hundred an issue occurred. You think the message would be nicer, but I mean I guess the you know access they to never are. web has been blocked kind of gives the gist of it. But why throw a five hundred if it's actually a defined condition? That seems a bit crazy to me. Rather than a four hundred three or four hundred one. If it's why throw an error at all? Just just throw a pop up that says I'm sorry, you don't have access. Talk to your yeah. admin. Yeah. Like politely, but no. <laughs> That's something that Microsoft has been <laughs> trying to improve for years. So yeah, maybe this is just a, you know, one of those kind of remnant experiences that they've not gone and. Could have been unexpected error. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Could, they could just give her a correlation ID and said they go so far. <laughs> yeah. All right, and we've efficiently run through the list. We've got one more. I threw on just as an extra here, um, but uh, in the four and a half minutes we have left, I think more than enough time to answer this. But Ashik says, what Microsoft app to use to create a daily recurring checklist? The checklist needs to be reusable. And so, I mean, I know I use um, to do, but that I was going to say re to do. reusable, but a reusable checklist though. So I know with the new to do the, 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 the you know, the uh, published, was it the, what's the new, the wording, the new published list, there's something that's a planner and then you can consume it via to do, but I think it's actually a planner where, uh, see, I find it somewhere, but something that's a brand new. Yeah task looks type. This just came out in the last two weeks. It's called tasks by planner and to do the little app that you can add now. Well, there's the there's the app, but then there's a specific template within that. 
So it's a, for a recurring list so you can, you know, publish a list out and have, so you can have, like, for example, you might have uh, your deployment methodology that might have 50 different tasks completed and that you can use it as a template and it might be on a daily basis or, you know, like an operational run list. And every day it's the same 20 things that you run through um, for that that day um, and go through. So you're not having to recreate that. If you were to do that in to-do, you'd have to um, go in and recreate it each day. But you can go in and register this, this uh, you know, task list and publish that out to a team and have it uh, kind of recurring. I need to go and find the link for it. I'll, I'll, I'll mark it as homework for myself and I'll share more about it. So it's, it's something I would like to go and and blog about, talk about. Did someone find the link? I've just put a link in. I don't know if it's exactly what we're talking about though, but it's tasks in planner. It might be just individual versus repeatable. I just thought since we're getting to the end of the call, I just thought I'd throw it in there. It might be the wrong thing, but I'll take a look at it and share it out there. So with that, we are we are at the end of the the, the live stream. For those that are watching via some format out there, so apologize for the hiccup there. We're not sure what sure what happened with OBS that froze on us. We had to restart the live stream, uh, but we are every Monday morning at 8 a.m. Pacific. And, and welcome to join our cast of thousands. And thank you to Tracy, Neil, <laughs> Hal, and Sean. Eric, I'm not going to thank because he said he was going to come back and he didn't. So that I just, <laughs> he just flat out cool, lied, right? lied to all of us. I know. And uh, Mike, I know, had other stuff going on. Sherry and Sharon, who both uh, had customer activities happening this week. But thanks all for participating. Again, the recording will be up on the Cloud Talk page out on YouTube. And the blog post um, tonight, I'll have it out there with every question that we went through with a link to uh, the video where we hopefully answered the questions. I think we did a decent job of answering the questions. We punted a couple times, uh, but that'll be out yeah, on Buckley Planet. We got, them. Yeah. we got through them all. Yeah, We did. We usually don't get through them all, so that's great. Indeed. Well, the, it felt, is it that felt something like to a normal see? project meeting to me. We yeah. worked through it all, and I don't know. Well, was that achieve, combination of Tracy here helping us answer stuff and Mike not here um, bloating it out with his Azure stuff? <laughs> hey, there's nothing wrong with Azure. <laughs> I just wait till next week when Mike comes Mike, back. Mike's not yeah. here. Have to have to trash talk Mike a little bit. So, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, yeah, no, I, I there's a couple questions that I'm holding off until next week till Mike is back that are in his area. So. Um, lots to go over uh, as always, but we'll be back here next week. Again, everybody, if you have other questions, reach out to any one of us via social and we'll make sure to uh, answer the questions directly or fit them into next week's. And with that, hey, thanks a lot everybody for joining and we'll we'll see you next week. You betcha. Thank you. If have not great sooner. Week, everyone. Mm -hmm. See you later. Yeah. And I guess yeah. I can queue up the, uh, the, the music again here. So, all right, here we go. Oh, wait. It does the commercial. Dang it. <laughs> what? It's not so smooth hey, there. I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll, be, I'll be in sunny Cancun for the next two-week shows. Just letting you know. Oh, enjoy. Oh, good for you. We will miss you. You I'll will make, not miss uh, us. No, I will be there because I'm working. I'm working from Cancun the first week, and the next week I enjoy this, this, this so much I'm going to be here anyway. But I'll make sure that my background is actually the view out of my hotel window. Very cool. <laughs> All right. See you guys later. All right. Take care, okay. folks. Cheers, everyone. Bye.
and far into the night. I raise my hand to the fire, but it's no use, cause you can't stop it from shining through. It's true, baby, let the light shine through. If you believe it's true, baby, won't you let the light shine through?